If it's Friday, you know precisely what that means. Well, that is if you're a regular listener. Back in a minute. This is Jan from New York City, channel name Jan from New York City Saves Money. I love helping people keep some more of their own hard-earned money. Welcome to the Instant Coffee with Jan show. Today we talk about stockpiling. That's what I mean by Fridays. Every single Friday, I devote a little bit of time talking specifically about stockpiling. Let's do a little bit more zooming in on a specific item. Today we're going to talk about protein. Now, it has been proven It has been scientifically proven, and I have read many times where people have said this, the only thing that stops hunger truly isn't like a whole bunch of carbs that blow you up and feeling full for an hour, and then you're hungry an hour later. No, it's not that. It's protein. Just saying, just saying. Now, there are some foods that you can buy together that can make a complete protein, for example, For those who enjoy beans and rice, those are relatively inexpensive food. But let's go beyond the beans. Today, we're going beyond the beans. (laughs) Let's talk about inexpensive protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it could happen. Yes, it could. Now, a lot of people feel that the proteins, the meats in their diet, for example, there's not only meat that you can do, okay? But we're talking about stockpiling. Today, let's talk about canned meats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, some people wouldn't touch certain canned meats with a 10-foot pole, and some are totally fine with it and embrace it and use it in a lot of recipes. Know the ones that you like. Get that at a good price. Stock up and save. They are more or less pretty, pretty good on the shelf-stable arena. So that's important, okay? Now, I came across this package of six cans of premium quality tuna, the solid white one, the really good one. Okay. Premium quality, but don't laugh. I actually also enjoy chunk light, the flavor. I know I could go from the sublime to the ridiculous in my taste. I get it. But this was on sale at one of those uh, big box stores, for example, for six of those cans, the premium one for $12, not bad, not bad. $2 a can, $2 a can for quality protein. Okay. So this is what to do. Concentrate your next trip. If you don't emphasize or haven't emphasized on the protein factor, consider some canned meats that you, or fish, obviously, or chicken. Now the price of boneless uh, canned chicken went all the way up about a year or so ago. And now it seems to be coming down. So grab that while you can. This is the whole important thing of this, to be able to get the best price on things your family actually enjoys using and eating, for example. And I'm just saying, protein does satisfy the appetite. Ever go on one of those all or mostly protein diets? For the most part, after a while, you're not all that hungry. Why? Because protein satisfies hunger. Where too many carbohydrates can work against the person. They may feel temporarily full. And I'm not saying don't get carbohydrates. No, no, no. Please do not misunderstand. In fact, I never give out dietary advice or anything. All I'm saying is this week we're concentrating on the purchase at the best price of. Talking about prices, not talking about diet. What is your favorite form of protein? Now, in your active pantry, for example... Eggs are still relatively cheap. I know. Well, we had ups and downs with those, but thankfully that has thankfully climbed down a bit in many places, although some people are still paying much more than they did, let's say, two years back. But if you do the math and divide the dozen eggs by whatever the price, it's still relatively inexpensive because you're getting 12 opportunities out of a dozen So eggs are still a fairly good bargain for protein. They shut off your appetite too. You could feed a few people on one dozen eggs. Back to, excuse me, please. Back to your stockpile. Try to find out the best opportunity for protein. That includes peanut butter, by the way. So peanut butter is another great idea. Now, sometimes you could get like certain 
uh, certain meats. They like um, like dehydrated type of meat. I'm not quite sure since I don't buy that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not quite sure about the storage of those. I don't know if they're okay at room temperature or they need refrigeration. So anything like that, look into and double check. I'm not going to give you information if I don't know it. But focus on the prices. There you go. That's really today's um, really reminder. And if you have not started a stockpile, anyone could start one. And if this is your first time listening and you don't have a stockpile, don't be afraid to start. All you have to do is walk to your active pantry, take out a can or a box or two, macaroni and cheese, for example, the shelf stable item, put it away in a box or another location. You just started your stockpile. Congratulations. We're all rooting for you. Then from hence, hence forward, hence forth forward, what you do every single week, take about $5 and you increase your stockpile. And it doesn't happen overnight, but let me tell you, you do it little by little by little. You look from the day that you started to a few months ahead and look back and say, wait a minute, this stockpile is really growing. There's nothing like the good feeling of knowing that you have that food security. You never know. Rainy days, busy days, don't feel good days, don't want to go to the grocery store for a whole month. And, you know, I could tell you like a thousand reasons, saving money reasons. It's just an assuredness to know it is there. Sudden income loss. Yes, yes, yes. So build up your stockpile. It's a really good thing to do. Listen, wishing everybody an amazing, fantastic day. Take good care on this upcoming weekend and be well. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for your time. Take care.